um, let's get let's get started. Um, let's see, uh, Bobby, you want to read the uh, official? You know, I will. Yes. So just as a reminder, this meeting is being broadcast and recorded on the City of Lawrence YouTube channel. The public chat function has been disabled and all chats will go directly to me. When you are not participating in the meeting, please mute your microphone. But when you are participating in the meeting, keep your video on. <clears throat> Excuse me, when you are not participating in the meeting, please turn your video off. You will still be able to hear the meeting. You can turn your video back on when you are participating. Turning the video off when you are not participating allows the active meeting participants to be seen on the screen. If you have any trouble, please send me a chat. The city reserves the right to mute microphones and or turn off people's video to minimize distractions. Please remember to state your name every time you speak for the benefit of those listening remotely. Chair Nalbandian, if a motion is made and seconded, please call on task force members individually to provide their vote. Then announce whether the motion carried and the count of the vote. When the chair calls for public comment on an item, individuals participating via Zoom should use the raise hand function to indicate they wish to speak. The raise hand function may appear in different places on your Zoom menu depending on the device you are using and which version of Zoom you have. Individuals will be called upon by name in the order they appear on the meeting host screen. When you are called on, please unmute and state your name. Comments will be limited to three minutes. When the chair calls for in-person public comment, individuals should raise their hand to indicate they wish to speak. Staff present will direct you to the podium to speak following social distancing and safety protocols. Please state your name before speaking. Comments will be limited to three minutes. Thank you, Bobby. You're welcome. So the, uh, the first item on our agenda is approval of the minutes. So assuming you've all had a chance to take a look at the minutes. Um, oh, there's John too. Welcome, John. And Michael Amon as well. So um, let's see, uh, can we have a motion to approve the minutes? Unless there's an amendment, anyone wants to amend the minutes? Jim Carpenter moved to approve the minutes. Second, Rachel, will second? Uh, not, not a second, but for some reason I didn't get the minutes. Um, that That's okay. I assume that nothing untoward happened and so you know, no, no nefarious plans were made to overthrow the universe. So I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and second the motion. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you for your, um, thank you for your naive trust. In that. <laughs> 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 oh, no, <laughs> thank you. Okay. So it's been moved by Jim Carpenter, seconded by Rachel Reed to approve the minutes. Um, we will now have a roll call, uh, roll call vote. So, uh, Bonnie, will you start us off? Uh, Bonnie Johnson abstained. I was absent. Okay. Uh, Jim? Jim Carpenter, yes. Eileen? Eileen Horn, yes. Sammy? Yes. And Rachel Reed? Um, I was absent also like Bonnie, but I soon see no reason to abstain. So I'll go ahead and vote yes. Okay. Uh, John? John Wilson, yes. And John Albandian, yes. So uh, we'll move on to the next, uh, to our only agenda item, which has to do with districts and at large elections. So. Let me uh, just a few introductory uh, comments here before we uh, before before we invite um, your discussion. Um, the goal today is to come up to come to an agreement, if we can, on three questions. The first is 
do we, are we gonna recommend districts? Are we going to recommend at large? Or are we going to recommend a combination of the two? Uh, if we recommend, the second point is if we recommend districts, how many districts, well, no, this, no, no, how many districts or how many at large representatives would we have? And third is the length of um, the length of the term. So those are the three things that we are that we're going to look at. And I think, um, and as I, I said in the document that I, uh, I prepared for you, at our last meeting, our informal poll suggested that we were leaning toward districts, but there was a considerable amount of uncertainty, I think. So um, I, um, you know, there was, um, hi Bird, welcome. Uh, so, um, you know, there was that uh, very, very good suggestion. I thought of uh, looking, looking at the uh, question through the um, through the value lens, which I which I did, and then uh, there's some other information that I uncovered that I'll be glad to share with you um, later on. But frankly, it's moved me more in the direction of districts. Uh, there is one piece of information uh, that. Um, we we did not consider, and and you may find relevant. Um, I just thought about it today. I um, asked uh, Bobby to go back and uh, tell us uh, when the city of Lawrence adopted the commission uh, manager form of government, and it did so in early 1951. And I believe that the form, the structure, uh, meaning five commissioners, the mayor elected from among the commission, um, was adopted as part of that part of that plan. And I'm pretty sure that was the case because that is the classic, um, or that's the way the plan was originally conceived. So I'm assuming that that was what happened. I then looked at the population of Lawrence in 1950. The population was, do you wanna guess? It was 10,000. So we have the same number of commissioners, the same form, whatever, now we are we are five times as big, a hundred thousand. So you know that fact alone kind of is pushing, <laughs> pushing me in the direction of districts. But uh, let's hear from you all. You've read some stuff, I presume. Uh, I know Hugh said that he's absent, but he said he looked at some videos on district at large. You probably maybe done some reading yourself. I just want to open it up and uh, let's hear from 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 you before hopefully we'll be able to get to the point of making a motion. So who wants to uh, get us started? Uh, so Rachel, go ahead. I uh, never want to uh, keep my mouth shut. I'll, uh, I'm leaning more towards a hybrid, a district and at large, and then have a directly elected mayor uh, looking at your notes, the mayor that you sent out earlier today, I believe, um, the mayor who was asked implied that he was directly elected and represented the district. I was a little confused on his comment. Yeah, no, he, he was, he did represent a district before he became mayor. Oh, okay. So he's directly elected now. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I feel that, uh, and I know we've covered this previously, I feel the number of commissioners should be an, uh, an even number. And then the mayor is the odd number being directly elected. Um, in, in my opinion, the mayor would 
would be a tiebreaker um, during any commission um, voting and things like that. Okay, thank you, Rachel. Who, who else wants to weigh in here? Uh, I've, I've been thinking about this uh, quite, quite, quite a bit, uh, and I, I'm surprised that how much I've moved toward the, the districts. I think your uh, figures, first of all, we haven't reconsidered a form of government in 70 years. I, th I think that's worth considering on its own that we real and and I think it's a mark that more or less it has worked. So I'm, I'm not really being critical of it. Uh, I do think though that, now you said 10,000, did you say 10,000 or 20,000 in 1950? 10. Yeah, so I mean, we're, we're 10 times bigger. Oh, 10 times. And, yeah. and uh, if you're at 10,000, you have five commissioners, they could all have a pretty intimate relationship with their electorate. Um, but we're now asking with districts, if you go to six, um, would be, we are now going to a district of 16,000 plus you would represent the entire city. And, and I think, I think commissioners would, because as we've seen in the district information, um, it's hard to differentiate one district from another on any kind of rational grounds, uh, ethnicity, race, whatever. So the, the problems facing one district are very similar to problems facing another. But I do think you get the kind, you know, a little more of the intimacy and close connection that you might have had uh, 70 years ago uh, when, when we went to the, um, the, to the commission form, form of government. Um, I, I do think that uh, the six commissioners is a good number right now, plus an elective mayor. Uh, but re remembering uh, Elaine's most persuasive uh, <laughs> uh, but brief discourse a couple meetings back, um, I think I was always thought of the mayor as a tiebreaker. But her point was that we would the, the mayor, as a mayor, member of the commission, would vote on everything, and I, I think that's the right. Uh, clearly, the right. Once you think about it for a minute, you really want the mayor on on the record uh, uh, on 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 issues. Um, I got a couple of other things to think about. I've always thought about three commissioners being elected uh, every two years for a total of six. Uh, but I was I actually have to testify on Thursday about redistricting in Kansas. And it got me thinking about terms of office and things of that nature. And it, it, I don't want to confuse any issues, but I also thought, I thought maybe we should just have the mayor and all six commissioners elected in the same election. Um, and, we, and then they'd all have four year terms together. Uh, that may make the commission a little less responsive because you don't have the, the off year elections. But uh, I just, uh, I hadn't thought of that before. Uh, one of the things that, that got me going was maybe one of the commissioners would like to run for mayor on, on the off year, you know, when, when you still have two years, does that commissioner resign? Does, it, does that person, you know, get a free shot at running for mayor? What, I don't know. Uh, I think there's a lot of complexities here, and I don't want to overcomplicate it. But uh, I, I, I do think that one of the, we're missing two things: we're missing the centralization that a, that a mayor gives us, and we're missing the relatively intimate rela representational relationship the smaller districts give us. And I think if we go to six and the elective mayor. Uh, both issues to a point are addressed. Thank you. Thank you, Bert. Um, John, this is Bobby Walthall. I just want to remind everybody to please state your name. Oh, I'm sorry. For, That's for okay. That moment, 
Sorry. That's okay. You weren't here for my reminder, so this is another yeah. gentle reminder. I can gentle remember design. from one thing, one meeting to the next. Come on. No, I know, I know. I don't want Tony to. I don't want Tony to get on to me. So. <laughs> okay. Other other uh, other thoughts. Jim, Jim Carpenter. Yeah, Jim Carpenter. Um, yeah, I've been leaning towards districts, and I think you know, no matter how they're drawn, what's going to happen is the individual representing whatever the district might be is going to pick up on those issues that might set that district apart from others. And I'm really thinking about only those cases where a district might see a disproportionate impact of a city goal. A recent one is like the Stratford Water Tower. You know, that that really was a community-wide benefit on public land, but it had a very disparate impact on one, one small portion of a district. But that would allow that district representative to actually, you know, focus more on their concerns. And that's just one example. I'm I don't think I'd be in favor of all commissioners and the mayor elected at the same time, because we could end up with the possibility of an entirely new commission and a new mayor going <laughs> straight into straight into a budget cycle. Mm -hmm. Because that's what happens to every newly elected commissioner. They're immediate with the elections having been moved to November, mm -hmm. they're immediately thrown into the budget. So I think it's important we at least have, you know, some proportion of the commission always there that have been through the budget process at least once or twice um, instead of having all new people. And that's the only reason I would say I'm not in favor of everybody at once. Um, and I'm also kind of like the idea of some a mix of districts and at large, but, you know, if we want six districts, that's great. But I think, you know, just so we can, you know, divide them up. But if we went with that large, we could, you know, Eileen brought up the confusion possibly on the ballot. If it was at large, we could do the at large and the mayor in one election cycle and then two years later do all the districts so that each election is either mm. districts or at large instead of a mix of both. Mm. So that's just some thoughts right now. <clears throat> Thank you, Jim. That's helpful. Uh, this is Sammy Turner. Um, I just want to say I agree with a lot of the um, things that have already been said. Um, I think if we, I'm heavily leaning towards districts. I think if we do districts, we need to do, you know, at least six in order to get like down um, and make, you know, our local government the most accessible government that we have. Um, I think if we're talking about, you know, increasing voter engagement, um, you know, having better constituent services um, and fielding more candidates, I think doing something that's smaller um, is definitely the best way to go. Um, you know, if we go the like hybrid route, um, I like what Jim said about, you know, trying to avoid that confusion of having the at large at, on one ballot, one, like, you know, one year and then having all the districts on one year. I don't know if that would like help people understand how our government works even more. Um, but if we do go the route of um, a hybrid model, I would think we probably would want to have like maybe like six districts and then maybe like two at large candidates or something like that. Um, and I'm not sure like if people were elected at large, if we had that hybrid where the people at large have any like benefits for being elected at large. I'm not sure. Thank you, Sammy. Uh, Rachel? Um, just a comment on the ballots. Uh, in, in contrast to Jim, I don't think there would be a confusion. Um, there would be a ballot slot for the mayor. Each district would vote on their representative. That would be another ballot slot or ballot 
box area on the ballot itself. And then the at-large representatives would be a third area of the ballot. And the instructions are very explicit. I've, I've worked the elections for about 10 years. So I, I've seen how the ballots are constructed. The uh, only fun would come with uh, Jamie Hsu uh, needing to develop the uh, districts because I don't think that's our purview. But anyway, in answer, you know, in contrast, I don't, I don't feel there would be any confusion on the actual physical ballot. Thank you, Rachel. Um, Eileen or John, how are, where are you leaning on this? Thanks, uh, this is Eileen Horn. Um, I'm, I'm leaning toward districts. I think everything I've read thus far um, makes me feel like we maybe have grown up to that level as a city and maybe it's time for us to consider um, district elections. I think what I'm curious about at this point is um, the process from here on out and where our recommendations stop as an advisory board. Um, like how much information are we gonna give to the commission about this? And do we just give a summary memo that says, we think this is a really interesting idea and kind of put it in their lap or um, how far do we get to go with this recommendation I think is I, I, the major question at this point is. Uh, this is John Nelbandian. Um, my inclination is to make the recommendation and then to explain the logic of the of the recommendation so there would be more sort of information about the lot what we were considering how we considered it and so on so that mm -hmm. they so that they know um yeah that's that's the way i would i would do that i mean i anticipate uh, you know i anticipate that we'll send them send them the recommendations and then um, I will actually, I assume, actually present the recommendations and then so a little bit about the logic and then be there to respond to questions. Okay. Um, and just if you're keeping track, I'm, I'm kind of most interested in the six district model because I feel like that's where we get to the benefits of the smallest, smaller constituent size in terms of all the benefits that provides for voters in terms of access and also for new candidates, because it's easier to think about funding a campaign to reach 16,000 than 100,000. John, um, John Wilson, where are you, where are you standing these days? Yeah, it's John Wilson. Um, and I am in agreement with what a lot of others have said. I'm, I support districts and I think the six district representatives and just go all in on the, on the district model and save the uh, mayor elected at large. Okay, thank you all very much. Uh, Bonnie has her hand up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Bonnie, I'm sorry. Hi, um, this is Bonnie Johnson. Um, I, uh, I keep waffling back and forth between districts or um, a hybrid of, of districts and at large. And, um, and I do think six districts is good. Um, I agree with what's been said about that. Um, I'm, I'm wondering about whether you do six districts and then two at large and, and then you somehow stagger three districts elected every two years and one of the at larges, and mm -hmm. then you're, you do three and one, three and one, something like that. Um, and then the mayor is a four year, um, term. Um, so, uh, I, I think I'm, I'm really in agreement with everybody about six districts. I'm just kind of wondering about the length of the term, um, perhaps whether you do elect them all at once or you do half one year and half the other year, something like that. Um, and then whether you do say like, because if you did have the the commission members two year terms, the mayor four year terms, then that would distinguish the mayor at large from the at large commission members. That large commission members would only be two years. 
the mayor would be for, and that would show that the, that they're not not rivals in that sense. Um, the the mayor having the longer term. So those are my what I'm mulling through. Okay, thank you, Bonnie. Let me. Um, I think we. Uh, uh, Rachel, go ahead. I uh, just one question, Bonnie. Would you? Uh, did I misunderstand? But you were looking at the mayor as a four-year, the district commissioners as four-year, and the at-large as a two-year term of service. Oh, I maybe <laughs> this is Bonnie Johnson, <laughs> but I was actually kind of thinking of of the the city commission members all two years mayor for a year but what you just said makes sense as well john <laughs> yeah I, I, uh so I, i'd like to bring craig into the conversation because i know that he has talked uh, a lot in the past about uh, having uh more continuity on on the, on the commission and uh, i wanted to know uh, uh, and then, then I also want to know a little bit about the size of the commission. Uh, I, I, I think that if I read Craig correctly over our conversations, uh, he would he wants there to be more continuity. So I think four year terms make a lot of make a lot of sense uh, across the board, uh, whether it then staggered or not. But what I'm what I'm interested in is now we, we're for the first time broaching six districts plus two at large members. Um, and I, I'm not, not so that now we're, we were moving from five to six commissioners plus a mayor, that gets you to seven. If we did six plus a mayor plus two at large, you're now getting to nine. Uh, Craig, do, do you see any issues with, uh, those kinds of numbers. We can't hear you, Craig. No. Well, while Craig is uh, well, Craig yeah. is trying to get his audio. I'd like to weigh in on on this as well. Um, in the first place, I think nine nine people is too many. I mean, going from five to nine, I would, it's just too many. The uh, but the, the thing is that. The logic of at-large elections is that those two people would have the perspective of the city as a whole, assuming that those who run in the district elections would have a parochial view. I don't, I don't think that's the case. Okay. I, don't, I don't assume that. Now, if, if I thought that the districts would be so differentiated, then that might be might be the case. But you know, having looked at the maps the way I've looked at the maps, and it's like we are not going to be able to differentiate the districts uh, in the ways that they traditionally were envisioned, which was after the Civil Rights Act of 1964, districts were really became a remedy for the uh, underrepresentation of minorities in at large at large elections so for example the city of dallas which had a council manager form of government um, virtually all of its council representatives were at large they were all at large well they all came from north da north North Dallas with a minority in the South. So 
the remedy was to move move to districts. I personally, I don't see that kind of concentration of almost any variable that we can think of, um, especially after looking at the maps. So, and as Craig has pointed out, the, the vast majority of items that come to the city commission are, are not isolated to individual districts. They're the most important issues are broad, are broad issues. And I, I so I, I personally am not in favor of at large. Uh, I don't like the idea of a large, uh, a large governing body, that large a governing body. It seems to me that the six districts and a directory, directly elected and directly elected mayor um, is a is a is a good next move uh, for for us. Craig, are you are you you think you're talking? You're I hope so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All, right. All right. Well, uh, City Manager Craig Owens, the good news is, is I think I've been uh, you've represented my previous comments accurately from what I heard. I ducked out for a little bit. Um, so I would I would I would say it is. I've worked with as many as 15 elected officials. Um, that that uh, makes it very difficult to have much of a relationship with them um, and to work through the issues and have a have those conversations. Five is the least that I've worked with and I've found it to be wonderful as far as being able to get to know people, which has been especially important since we switched so, so often here. Um, seven, Seven sounds fine and is more typically what I've worked with in other places. Um, it does, it, it's kind of the right balance. Nine, you're starting, you are starting to get up there where it's, it's more difficult to have that relationship. Um, and I would say that if, as we start to go towards the districts, more of the conversation goes to, right now when somebody wants something in their neighborhood, a neighborhood issue, and they want to involve their elected officials, they, they approach all five at one time. When you bring districts in, then that organizes very quickly. So it's actually a streamlined approach to give a lot more attention. So they'll say that, let's say district one would say, hey, Craig, um, you know, there's a pothole on this street. Could you take a look at that? And it's, that's, that's, that gets taken care of quickly. That kind of uh, district type stuff. So it's important that if you'd spread me out over nine people to have those conversations, it does start to become a little unwieldy. So I don't know if that's useful. The The other thing is on the continuity. I think they uh, that was the question. And, you know, obviously I'm biased. I like continuity. Uh, I like long strategic horizons so we can do big things. Um, so that's, that's balanced. So that is a bias I have, but I find that you know it is a very challenging job and it's a very complex organization and thus a wide range of complex um, technical issues that become policy matters. And to have somebody only in for a couple of years is very difficult. Uh, and, and then the last point I'd make is if you have them all in the same election cycle, you become very vulnerable to the issue of the day completely changing um, maybe what should be a strategic um, a strategic role that they play on longer term policy direction. Thank you, Craig. Our reactions to what you've heard from me and Craig now, uh, Eileen. Thanks so much, John. Eileen Horn and Craig, thanks for your comments. It, it made me think of two things. Um, the reason I'm in favor of the districts and not the hybrid where there's also at large is I think that might send an un unintended consequence. There might be an unintended message sent to those district commissioners that these two at large got the whole city. So you can be um, only focused on your district. And I think that might communicate the wrong thing if we want them to maybe be 
the the recipient of uh, information from their district and hold those special issues of that district close to their heart, but still have the big vision. I think um, I think that would be the ideal job description for a district commissioner. And so I think that large might unintentionally um, erode that a little bit. The other thing I was thinking about as we were talking, Craig, is what would happen to me sometimes in the legislature and, and um, other folks on this call who have been in elected positions, when you get an email about an issue and several other people are CC, there's that moment where you're like, I, I actually don't have to take care of this or I'll wait and see if somebody else chimes in. I actually think we would get more timely responses because that person is like, sees their address and goes, oh, that's my person, I'll lead. And um and so I think it actually would help with just the general responsiveness, just thinking of it from that standpoint of they're busy people, they get a ton of emails, but if their slice of people they need to directly and immediately respond to quickly is smaller, that might make it easier. So just practically speaking. That's all. <laughs> um, if anybody... <laughs> If you do not object, then I would like to make a motion. Is that is that proper for the chair to make a motion? I don't I don't have any idea. I'll make one and if you uh John, I, I see a, a Michael Allman member of the public has his oh. hand up. And then he disappeared. Well, he's there. I don't know. Yeah, I, I saw I his know. hand up. No, Bobby said no one was there. Okay. No, he's there now. It wasn't there a second ago, but he's there now. Oh, okay. Michael, do you want to say anything? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, before you take a vote, uh, this is Michael Allman, and I'm just speaking for myself. Um, I pretty much agree with most of what everybody has said there, particularly about having six districts um, I can go either way with the at-large. Um, I don't find nine to be a particularly large number, although that might be the top. But what I do want to say about districts is that, and in all due respect for you, Mr. Nalbandi, and I, I have to disagree with your assessment that there's no way to differentiate between different districts, um, considering, um, uh, all the variables, as you put it. When I look at, at Lawrence, I see quite a diversity, actually. Um, economic diversity, cultural diversity, land use diversity, zoning diversity, any number of things like that. Zoning, uh, part of the town has very small lots, part of town that I happen to live in. Um, and that has impact on the infrastructure capacity, particularly if it's old infrastructure. It also makes a difference when there are uh, proposals that would apply to some zoning districts and not others that would affect a zoning district with small lots differently than a zoning district with large lots. Um, and the cultural differences, I mean, there are differences like art districts and things like that. But more than that, I think in cultural terms of people who are not that adept at public intercourse and, and political discourse and may not feel very comfortable standing before the city commission. And there's a whole lot of people like that. I mean, I used to feel that way, but I overcame it. So with a district representation, that person who's representing your district would feel much more accessible. Somebody would feel it's easier to talk to that person. So, I mean, there's those subtle cultural differences as well. Um, eh, uh, what else did I want to say here? Well, that pretty, pretty much covers it. It's just that I think those are all good arguments that I think should be cited when you make your recommendation for districts, and I do thank you for your work. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Michael. Um, okay, so I'm gonna make a motion. Um, I move that we recommend 
um, a six, six districts, um, four year terms that are uh, staggered. Uh, we already have the mayor elected at large, uh, directly elected at large. So that is my motion. Is there a second? John, I, this is Sammy Turner. I had a question. Um, yeah. by staggered, do you mean like we have um, three elected the same year as the mayor and three elected another year? Or do you mean yeah. we have the mayor elected one year and then we have all the districts elected another year? No, I, I meant the three, three and three. And then the mayor is in one of those, one of those three years, one of those two okay. years, whatever. Yeah. So is there a second for the motion? Um, this is Eileen Horn. I just have a quick clarification. Do we need to say anything in the motion that these would be like um, six districts representing approximately the same size population? Like, do we need to be that clear that we're talking about six Wait. equally sized districts? Districts, when they're drawn, there's there are legal there are legal okay. uh, requirements, uh, and that's why. See, that's why in part it becomes difficult to do the differentiation because uh, among like Michael is talking about, for example, when you talk about East Lawrence, you don't, you generally do not include East East Lawrence. I mean, East Lawrence mm -hmm. is what we, what most of us consider East Lawrence is you know, it goes out to about 11th Street and, you know, whatever. But my gosh, you know, it goes out to the county fairgrounds. Those are, that, really, that is a really different, <laughs> or, or think of the, I mean, drawing districts is going to be, is, is not our job, thank, okay. thank you, but there are legal requirements. Okay, great, thanks for that. Okay, thank uh, Sammy? Oh, this is Sammy Turner. I had, um, I was just kind of wondering what are some of like the reasons behind having, um, and like, I don't have a strong opinion on this. I'm just curious um, about why do we have it staggered and not have, you know, focus on the mayor like this term and then focus on all the districts another term or, or another election cycle. You know? okay. John? I think Bird wants to respond. I mean, to I think J Jim's point was really well taken that it's it, if you had a big turnover, you would have six rookies or five rookies uh, facing the budget, which would be uh, very difficult. And I think we've kind of assumed all along that it would be three and three, thus giving Craig more of the continuity that he aspires to as city manager. Okay, that helps. Thank you. Uh, Rachel? Yes, just one question. Um, an observation, it, it actually, it appears we've moved uh, completely away from considering uh, a hybrid form of government. That's the motion. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second it. <laughs> Thank you, Bert. I would. You're uh, welcome. <laughs> uh, uh, John Albandian has made the motion, and Burdette Loomis has seconded the motion to um, move to six cis representatives, six district representatives, each of whom have a four year term with staggered elections, so three years, uh, three elected um, at a time. Okay, so uh, it's moved and seconded. So uh, we need a roll call vote here. So let's start with, I'll just go on my, my, my view here. Jim, uh, how are you? Jim Carpenter, yes. Bonnie? Uh, Bonnie Johnson, yes. Eileen? 
Elaine Horn, yes. Sammy? Sammy Turner, yes. Rachel? Yeah. Say it. Oh, she's muted. she's muted. Okay. All right. Yes. Okay. John Wilson? John Wilson, yes. And Burdette Loomis? Burdette Loomis, yes. And John Nelbandian, yes. Okay, folks, that was a, that's a big one. Um, yeah, congratulations. <laughs> I think we did a good a good job there. The next thing um, we have, I think I was looking at the uh, formal charge, and I think with what we have decided about the mayor and the district election, so on and so forth, we have fulfilled our charge. We can go. Uh, beyond that, however, um, and we are going to go beyond that with the discussion of the the, the discussion that we had. Um, but I think uh, there is uh, there's a question of rank choice voting, and uh, we don't have to make a recommendation there, but I think it would be helpful. Maybe it would help if we introduce that. And so the idea is right now, the way it works right now is um, once we get down to a manageable number, I, I don't know how many that is, is it less than 12, Craig, or le no, it's less than, it's six or less. So we'll, if there are more than six candidates for, <clears throat> if there are more than six candidates, then uh, we have a primary to get down to six. Once we get down to the six, then the top three vote getters are elected. The first place person gets, a first and second place person get a two, four year term, third place person gets a two year, a two year term. What that means is that it's very possible for anyone to get elected without a majority vote. So it's a plurality, it's a plurality, whoever gets the most, the most votes. Now, if we think that if that's okay, then we're fine. If we wanna take issue with that and say, no, we would rather endorse majority rule, then we have to entertain the possibility of primaries that would get down to, um, you know, two candidates, um, or if there were more than two running in a district, we'd have to have a primary. Um, if, and however, uh, if we did ranked choice voting, that would be the alternative to having the primaries and so on. Bird, I didn't say that very well. Do you wanna, you, why don't you try to take a better card? <laughs> no, I think you did say it pretty well. So let, let's, let's be clear here that as we move, if we move the system that we have proposed, then uh, some of the problems that we have faced before uh, go away. Uh, in the sense that we are choosing one mayor and we're choosing per district uh, one representative. Um, and, and so uh, one way to, uh, let's take the mayor and the, and the district separately. Um, one of the thoughts I've had for a long time is that we would, one of the great advantages of a mayoral system would be you'd have a couple of candidates over a couple of months really talking about the issues of the day, what's made the major issues. Um, and so uh, even though I've, I've got a lot of positive feelings for ranked choice voting, um, with the mayor's race in particular, I'm thinking uh, if there are more than two candidates, uh, I would like to have a primary. Um, 
and it's nonpartisan. So if in the primary, if the first election, uh, one of those two, one of the candidates gets 50%, then it's over. Okay. If, if no one gets, if there are three or four candidates, nobody gets 50%, you then go to a runoff and you have that two month period where you would have discussion over two visions of what the future of Lawrence would look like, which has always been in my mind as, as a very a great positive. Uh, if you just had ranked choice voting, you might have five or six candidates and you'd still have this pr profusion of voices. Now you would get with ranked choice voting, a majority winner. That, that's very straightforward as the, the lowest person drops out, both are redistributed. That's pretty straightforward and, and pretty easy. Uh, although uh, sometimes you get a lot of drop off and people don't fill out their ballots. That's another story. Uh, in terms of the individual districts, uh, uh, again, uh, I'd be more sanguine about having ranked choice voting for those districts, having one campaign and then uh, having, having the, the voters of that district make a decision, whether it was two candidates or three or four or five uh, in, in one election without, without a primary. This all sounds a little complicated and, we, and we, we could just, we could go back to the system we have now. If there are more than two candidates, three candidates, you have a primary and then you have, have an election uh, 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 after the top two after that. Uh, but I think that this is something we might, we might want to you know, talk about, but then also have um, some written material that, that would lay out the, the, the choices because the more I've thought about it, um, the, the more nuanced it becomes. And uh, I really do want to have, particularly with an elective mayor, uh, the best possibility for a great decision discussion on the issues. And I'm not sure that just having one election with ranked choice voting um, mm -hmm. makes that work very well. I'd simply say, if you pay attention right now, New York City is having a mayoral election with ranked choice voting. And there are a lot of candidates and we'll see how it turns out. Um, but to me right now, there's not much great focus uh, in, in their electoral process. So those are just some of the considerations we should, we should take, take in, in, into, into account. But I, I would say the major problem that you addressed initially, John, about the, the three and the two, we are addressing that. But other problems, other issues on how we do it pop up. And we simply may want to hand that off with some explanation of alternatives to the commission. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a good idea. I think you know I don't want this to become a kind of like the major issue is do we do ranked choice voting or not? And I especially I think if if we're going to have ranked choice voting, we're going to have it for all the offices. We can't have it for it'd be too confusing. Otherwise, let's see. Eileen, did you did you want to weigh in here? No. No, I was talking to my son. <laughs> did he want to weigh in? Uh, he's welcome to. You know. Well, I'll tell you what. Maybe what we ought to do is um, We could postpone this until our next our next meeting. Um, each do a little bit of work to kind of catch up on it. There's also I made contact with a staff member in Northern California. It's in San Francisco, one of the Bay areas, 
it may be Berkeley, it may be one of the others, but they do rank choice voting. And I could invite that person into our, into our Zoom meeting, and that person could actually talk about the experience that they have. So what do you think about, do you think, would you, would you like that? Yeah. Yeah, and, and John, uh, I, I've got a friend at, uh, at MIT who has who's become a really substantial voting expert and uh, Cambridge has ranked choice voting. Yeah. Let me, let me talk to him a little bit and he just might write me a little memo on his experiences and would come from a, a, a real point, point of expertise. Oh, that would be great. Okay. That, I think that would be really good. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I don't want, I just don't want the, the, um, the city commission to get uh, bogged down in, you know, district. Uh, they're going to have enough on their plate just from what we have, we have, uh, we have suggested. Can I, can I, yeah. Can I, just to follow on up on that. And I see Rachel has her hand up, but, uh, I, I, I really emphasize what John, or, or take off from what John was just saying. We've proposed some changes to something that's been going on here for 70 years. And uh, I'd really like to see an elected mayor and I'd really like to see the district. I, I don't want to get that confused somehow with other issues, even though Theoretically, I've got a lot. I like ranked choice voting a lot, but I think we have put a lot, you know, a fair amount on their on, on their plate, and, and I really don't want want to uh, ask to, to confuse the issue where we might get uh, our recommendations. It might affect our recommendations if we ask or get get too many things uh, to be considered. Yeah, I'm I'm sympathetic to that, Bert. Uh, how about the rest of you? I mean, we can just pass on this on this issue here, and and so say this is where we want the focus to be on the directly elected mayor and the the districts for your terms and so on. Uh, any? Yeah, Rachel. I had to unmute myself. A uh, couple things. First, an explanation. I've got a sense of premise. And sometimes my hands don't do what I tell them to do. That's why it took a while for me to unmute myself. Um, I think beyond our charge, which as I understand it, was to make a recommendation on a directly elected mayor or not. Um, we've gone beyond that by um, looking at uh, districts and uh, enumerating the number of districts. I could be wrong because I see you shaking your head. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's our place to um, recommend a method of voting for those commissioners unless the uh, um, uh, commission, the city commission wants us to do that. A method of voting is a step beyond. It shows initiative, you know, which is always good, but uh, it, it's a step beyond. And some people might take issue with that. I'm a sympathetic, John Nalbandi, and I'm sympathetic to that as well. How about the rest of you? Are you okay with uh, where we are right now? Yeah, John Wilson. John, this, yeah, it's John Wilson. I don't think this is any uh, earth shattering revelation, but I'm just thinking about um, kind of the introduction of so many variables to, just in the event that the, even just the recommendation of district representation and that large, a large mayor, that's a large enough change that could we, if there were problems with that or what we didn't have the intended outcomes and we layered on top of that a, a changing how we vote, it would be hard to separate what was effective and what was not effective. Okay. Jim? 
Jim Carpenter. I think the discussion about ranked choice voting is worth having. And if we want to include that in the report, I, could su I would suggest that possibly to avoid some of the complications that have been brought up by others, that that could be included as kind of a future work item. Here's some information on it. Here's something to have a discussion on down the road once we get this new system in place. Because I think, John, you, you made the statement that if the city goes in for ranked choice voting, it's got to be for all the local elections. That was kind of my gut feeling. That's what we were going to see. Um, but that could be a question to Tony Wheeler if we really want to know that. But it, that might be an issue to include in you know, an appendix or future work item in our report to the city commission. <clears throat> Okay, well, why don't we, um, why don't we then um, ask uh, Bird to contact his uh, contact and uh, I, I, and I'm, I might just write a little memo up and, and circulate it. Yeah, just for information as opposed I mean, because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much I, I John's John's points echo mine and, and, and yours as well, John, uh, the two Johns. Uh, that we've at, we're asking for uh, substantial change. I think they'll be well received, honestly. But I think that's um, uh, short term. That's definitely uh, uh, enough. You know, I want to. This is John Nelbandian. I want to also uh, find a way to encourage uh, public. Uh, input on what we are proposing to recommend. And I don't know the best way, you know, I don't know the best way to do that. Um, but maybe, I don't know if those of you may know ways to do that, but I, I think what, what I'd like to do maybe at our next meeting is, is just to summarize or identify the recommendations that we're going that we're going to make, uh, maybe, um, yeah, the recommendations that we're going to make, and then invite a, a public comment on those, and and just leave the ranked choice voting thing away. Um, but I don't know how to get the the public the public uh, input. Do, I mean, I know the council or the the commission is going to is going to face that, but if we could anticipate it, it, might be helpful to them. Anybody have any ideas about how we could go about that? Hi, hey John. This is Eileen Horn. I, I would actually want to keep that question to Craig. Oh no, he just walked away. <laughs> um, <laughs> but thinking about the tools that the city has for citizen feedback. When is the right time? Do we do that now as an advisory board and say, we have these ideas that we're gonna to recommend to the commission or do we send our, cause, cause we are the citizen input board. Do we send that to the commission and then do we recommend that they put it out on Lawrence Listens or whatever it's called right now, the, the survey tool? City Manager Craig Owens, I, I don't think that there's necessarily a right answer here. Um, I do think and I'm trying to remember when we were conceptualizing this task force uh, that was kind of contemplated, but I, it, seem, it seems like the thought was you would do the work to provide something that could, um, could be commented on. Um, and uh, before the commission themselves would take it up and maybe make modifications listening to public input. So you're kind of creating the base uh, recommendation that may or may not be modified depending on direct citizen participation and comment. So it, it could it could come when you, after you hand it to them. Um, as to the tools and devices that we have, they're extensive and we would definitely publicize this and try and get an amount of information built up. But I, I do think that getting a timely recommendation to the commission, if this were to go up, want to go on the ballot this year, 
Um, you probably, we probably wouldn't have time to do both a public input session, an extensive public input session on this, and then do it again. We might, and we could look at that in, before next meeting, we'll, um, our team will kind of have some ideas for how that could be done. Sammy? Uh, this is Sammy Turner. Um, I had a couple thoughts. Um, the first was I like the um, idea that Jim had about, um, you know, in the presentation um, to the commission to saying like, hey, this is another area of work that we're interested in exploring as a task force. Um, because I personally think the idea of ranked choice voting is interesting and would love to like hear more about it from um, your expert friends and things like that. Um, but obviously agree with like the sentiments that have been said about how, you know, this is a lot of change that we're doing right now and uh, wanna keep it manageable. Um, the second thing I was thinking was, I don't know um, if in regards to public comment or things like that, if we would want to make our last meeting kind of the like, I don't know, like if it's like a big reveal or whatnot, but like that a big like thing where we like post it around and stuff and it's like, hey, everyone come to this meeting, give us your hot takes like um, about our uh, what we're going to present to the commission and stuff. And then that way they already have that bank of um, information to go for when they when the commission takes it up. Um, so maybe you know, our next meeting is figuring out how we want to lay that out for the public. And maybe the final meeting is presenting it to the public. And we could all maybe on our own personal networks or social media or things like that, circulate some sort of graphic or item or thing like that that's um, produced by the city to share. Uh, Rachel? Um, yeah, a, a couple of things. Um, Along the lines of what Sammy said of getting the information out, um, we've got several venues. We can put it out on our own social networks. Um, we can also get with uh, Chad Lawhorn at the Fish Rep. He's the managing editor, if I remember correctly. Um, and uh, perhaps have him talk with John and then provide a copy when we're done of what we're, you know, what has been presented. Um, but that's, you know, those are two major areas. Um, further down the road, uh, we've got second and third order effects that have got to do with education of the electorate. We're making a huge change and uh, the electorate's going to need information on what the change is, how it affects them, and why is it different. Um, again, a uh, conversation with Chad Lawhorn might be advisable on that end too. This is John Nelbandian. Uh, well, listening to everybody, it seems to me that um, there ought to be one initiative to, <clears throat> to stimulate, uh, I mean, many initiatives, but, but one thrust uh, to, to, get the public, to get the public involved. Um, I think, like um, Eileen said, um, we are the, we are the, the, the citizen, the citizen advisory board, in effect, uh, and and I, you know, I've changed my mind because I, I thought first of all I thought well we ought to get some public input, but on the other hand, you know I'm not really I'm not ready to start over again, <laughs> to start over again, and I would rather I would rather that uh, we do the presentation, um, we do the recommendations. We have the appendices that introduce, you know, what we talked about in terms of the roles and responsibilities. Uh, as Jim said, we say, you know, there's this other possibility as well, talking about this, that, whatever. But then we leave it up to the, the council and the staff, the commission and the staff to utilize the, uh, the channels that the city has in order to, um, in order to, um, to pursue the, 
pursue the feedback. I mean, it may be that the council, that the, keep calling them the council, it may be that the commission says, no, we're not going to entertain this. We don't care what citizens say. You know, this is too, this is too drastic. We're not going to, we're not going to do this. So that's my thought is to make our recommendation, the logic to the recommendation, and then let the, let the governing body decide how to process it. Yeah. Okay. Um, if that's the case, then what I would do is, I guess it's my responsibility to prepare, like what would go to the, um, what would go to the, the commission. And of course, I'll circulate it. And I'll try to do that be, before our next, what, our next meeting is what, the 27th or something? So that's 10 days. So if I can get this then done in the next couple of days, then you guys, you can give me some feedback and we can decide whether we need another meeting or not. Because it may very well be that we don't need another meeting. Does that, does that sound okay? Rachel? Oh, Tony's up there. I, 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 Hi, Tony. Welcome. Um, I would say that we would need another meeting um, once everything is finalized so that we can vote on it. And once that's done, you'll oh. have a recorded vote and then pass it forward. Okay. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And Eileen, uh, a suggestion. I, your son, I believe, when he's trying to throw the cap on his head, have him grab it by the bill and toss it up that way instead of trying to run underneath it. <laughs> I'll pass it along. I didn't realize you guys could see what he was doing that clearly. <laughs> I, I saw him trying flut fruitlessly and I, I thought it was, it was really interesting. Now he's all shy, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's great, thank you. That's a good, uh, that's a good suggestion that so the next meeting might be a short meeting, but at least we'll be able to take a, a vote on, uh, on whether to push forward on this. Okay, um, let's see. Um, is there any other, is there any public comment here at this point? I think, this is Sammy Turner. I think Michael has his hand up again. Michael, did you wanna say something? Uh, yes, John. Thank you. I do. Michael Allman. Um, going back to uh, the, the most previous meeting a couple of weeks ago, uh, your focus was primarily on the mayor uh, directly elected and the mayor's term, and you actually voted on that. But there was quite a bit of additional discussion at that meeting that I'm unclear as to how it factors into all of this. Um, you talked about, um, you know, whether the mayor actually votes or not, you know, that was discussed and it's implied from your discussion that the mayor will vote. You talked about being a tiebreaker, for example. Um, you talked about whether the mayor was a commissioner or not. Uh, and you talked about what the powers of the mayor might be um, none of that was actually voted on, as I recall, just discussed. Um, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't see it in the minutes. And I do have a perspective on some of that, uh, particularly the mayor's powers. Well, we, we did, we, we talked that out. And uh, what we decided to do was to... Um, provide like a discussion or an addendum to our recommendations and say, we also looked at roles and responsibilities. Uh, these are the ones that we agreed upon. And um, there are some that uh, may warrant additional discussion if you choose to, if you choose to do that. So that would not be a formal part of the recommendation itself. Okay, I understand. Right, but, but the the other thing that, if I'm, am I 
uh, the other thing that's clear was clear is that the mayor, the elected mayor, is a member of the commission, and the elected mayor does vote on all all issues. So yes. it's not a, a separate executive. This is uh, a member of the commission who has been elected mayor. All right, and I appreciate. It. I think you're wise in making that clear in your recommendations, although that's not a recommendation per se, but it is implied. Um, my only concern, as I recall, having to do with the powers of the mayor, you talked about how much engagement the mayor has in setting the agendas of the, the commission meetings. Um, and the way I look at that, that this, this discussion primarily, as I recall, grew out of a, a, a community-wide um, perspective on whether we want to continue with a strong manager, weak mayor form of government, or we want to try something different. And so I think it's important, if that is the case, that the mayor we're thinking about has stronger powers than now. And I think being engaged in forming the agenda is the primary power that the mayor should have. Um, the way I recall, the city manager would formulate the agenda and then run it by the entire commission. I would suggest that the city manager formulate the agenda in conjunction with the mayor and then run that by the commission. And this would be fully in keeping with the way that pretty much every advisory board of the city, other than the planning commission and the um, uh, MPO, advise, uh, MPO policy board, every board has the chair of the board, well, actually the, the staff liaison formulating the agenda in conjunction with the chair of the board. Michael, Michael, I'm going to interrupt you here. We have talked about that in, at length, and we have decided that that is going to be a point that we will offer as a discussion item, but it is not one that we are prepared to recommend. And we have, that's where we are on this. And that I don't sounds want, good. That sounds I don't fine want to bring to me. it up again because we've already, already done that. No, that thank you, John. I mean, that sounds fine as long as it's made clear yeah, what, it what the be. thoughts are. Okay. It will. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other uh, any final thoughts before uh, before we um, invite a motion to adjourn? Hi, John. This is Eileen Horn. I just want to say I think this would be like. Um, record breaking and, and history book stuff. If our if our advisory board like under promised, over delivered, got it done early, stayed to the task, like this is exciting. I think what we do is we just deliver really great information, very succinct talking points to the commission, links out if they want to learn more. And then we just, you know, hand it over to them. I think that that would be really great service. And I think this group has done really great work. So if we just use the last two meetings to kind of put a bow on it, I think that'd be excellent. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds very good. Okay, so I will try to get something out to you, um, you know, w uh, before the next weaning, of course. So we'll see. All right. Uh, can we have a motion to adjourn? This is John Wilson. I move we adjourn the meeting for the evening. Thank you, John. Is there a second? I second. Rachel Reed. This is Rachel Reed. Rachel Reed seconds. Uh, how about we just have a show of hands here? How about, um, all in favor, raise your hand. Okay. Uh, it's unanimous, uh, Bobby recorded as unanimous. So thank you all very much. We've accomplished a lot and uh, we'll see you, see you at the next meeting, okay? Thank you, John. John. Absolutely, thank you, John. Michael.